but like I said, I had certain things, uh, like I wouldn't use the hack lines. I think I tried to do them at first and I was like, I don't like this. I don't like that I didn't write a line, right? But I did use some of the techniques. And I, but I just remember one time I was driving this headline because back then that's what you did. You drove the headliner to all these gigs around, around the road. Yeah. And so we were on a triple run. And one day after a few nights of watching me, he said, look, here's what you need to do. And we had this long drive and, and he was one of the headliners. I, I probably got along well the least, which is a rare thing. Like I, I think for the most part, comics get along pretty well. Like we're all, cause we're all in the same boat. We're all kind of, we're all kind of taking the same shots. You know what I mean? We're, so we, we get it. We know yeah. what each other has gone through. But this is one guy I didn't get along with very well. But anyway, he just gave me this whole lecture. Like, hey, you know, I've been watching you. And uh, here's what you got to do. And he just started listening all this stuff. Like, you need to talk about sex more. Do you, do you have anything about sex? And I went, not really. I mean, I have some stuff that's kind of... He goes, well, you got to bring that stuff out. And and, uh, and then you got you to talk about drinking. You know, do you have any jokes about tequila? Like, no, I don't have and, any. And could he have replaced you with anyone based off these statements? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, was, this yeah, wasn't yeah. like, it had nothing to do it, with you. It's just, exactly. this is the method that you're not following. Exactly. Yeah. And, the, and that's the thing is every comedian has their own voice. There's no, there's no guidebook that you can hand to every single comedian, right? Yeah. Because we're all different. We all have our own way of looking at things. So it was never about watching me and trying to make what I do better. Yeah. It was literally about, um, um, here's what you got to do to do well in these gigs. Yeah. Right. But, these are, you know, these, these horrible bars in the middle of nowhere. I don't want to do great in these, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't want to become the guy that kills in these. Yeah. Um, that's now, an important th like thing to understand though. Yeah. It's like those, those gig like if you're developing, if you kill in those spaces all the time, it's probably not going to be an act that's suited for anywhere besides that. Place. Anywhere besides that. Yeah. Those are, those are their own animal. And you know what? I will say this. They're great uh, because when I started doing those, you're doing an hour, and if it's a, if it's a bad show, that hour goes by. F I mean, slowly. Yeah. You'd, <laughs> what did you do? Oh man, when you first start headlining those one nighters, and you got to do an hour, and it's and the tendency is when they're not laughing is to is to speed up a little bit because because <laughs> yeah. you don't like that silence, so you speed up. All of a sudden, it's forty minutes, and you're almost to your closer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's because <laughs> you know back then you only have you know you, you finally got your hours you can headline. Yeah. But when that hour has to be done quickly, man, it is a learning experience. And then the other thing is too is that even if like you look at the audience and you say, oh man, this is just you know this is like a redneck bar. They want it dirty. They want it blah blah blah. They want it dumb. Whatever. That's actually not true. There's there's ways to get like I knew when I went into those rooms like nobody's going to go. That's the best comic we ever had here. But I know that a percentage of that room goes. Wow, we've never had someone that I don't know that that clean or that whatever. You know what I mean? That that if you have your own voice and you can figure out how to translate it, yeah. Some of those rooms you're not going to get everybody, but you'll get a bigger percentage than you think. And that's the one thing you don't realize when you first start headlining those rooms because you think I got to kill or I'm not going to get this gig yeah. again, right? That's all you're thinking about. Yeah, I need to kill. And I mean. How long did it take for you? To, uh, I read your Facebook post about Tribble. Oh, yeah. Um, about the Tribble and, runs. And how he was like, I mean, you really wore it that whole, like, I need to kill. And he more or less told you, you need to fill the time. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was, cause I, cause that was my first run for him. Yeah. And I, I was on the second week and man, I was not doing well. And we were heading to Boise and the headliner said, oh, well, good. Well, you'll get to meet Dave, David Tribble. And I went, what? He goes, yeah, he lives in Boise. He runs the comedy club there. It was a Friday, Saturday night. It was the end of the run. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to meet David Trouble. I'm yeah. eating it out here, right? <laughs> so I went up to him and, and I introduced myself. And the first thing I say is, hey, I know you've been getting reports. I'm really sorry if, if you, if you want to, because we had a bunch of dates on the books. This is yeah. right after I quit my day job. So he gave me weeks of stuff. And he listened to me, the whole, just listened to me, nodding his head, smiling. And he goes, Kermit, right now? All I need from you is two things. Get my headliner to the gigs and talk for 25 minutes. He goes, that's all I need. Yeah. He goes, you don't have to kill. He goes, I, I would never expect you to come from Seattle out to Idaho and Montana and make everybody laugh. Yeah. Every, every, with every single joke. I mean, how much did that help you though? It helped me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I really was so worried about it. And, um, and then, and then the comedy club and you know, Boise is a good sized city and Boise is a great town. And it worked more like a comedy club because he had set it up like a, so I had great shows in Boise yeah. and I realized, okay, I see what he's saying. You know what I mean? I get it. And, um, although it did take me a little while to learn because the next week I'm out there in other gigs of his getting, getting my ass handed to me. Yeah. <laughs> I just, 
<laughs> Man, oh, and, and I remember at, at one point, um, the headliner actually came to my room after the show because he knew that I was just like ready to quit. Like he just goes, hey, let's go have a burger. And he just took me to have a burger and calmed down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was so... <laughs> So, yeah, so, but it did help to look at it that way that, okay, I can, my cars works well enough. I can get your headline yeah, yeah, to the gig, yeah. you know, I can do that. So, yeah, it's, I like what you said about the headliner thing there. Um, a big piece of this whole thing is that I don't like using the word fraternity because it's like, it, there's all different types of people in <laughs> comedy, but that relationship, that family type relationship where, you have somebody throwing their arm over your shoulder and like helping, you know, like I, it's, I don't know if I've been in anything similar to comedy where more established comics are like, uh, like old, older, I guess, I don't know, like throw their arm around people and like help, you know, like it's this nurturing environment and they, they give a shit. It's, it's really cool. Like, yeah. Were there any particular comics that helped you quite a bit? with that or like it or like how have you applied that yourself oh yeah yeah absolutely there are a lot of comics who who helped me and um you know still to this day brad upton who's really funny um he was a big help when i when i first started and still is like we, we still talk a lot and we still you know work together every once in a while um yeah there, and i and i was the same way man i i i couldn't wait to uh um I couldn't wait to go on the road and, 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 and hang out with friends and, and, and comics. And, and if I could help anyone, uh, I, I would love to do it. Now I don't, I, I'm not a guy who goes and gives comics advice. Um, but it, it, if someone asks me something, I will answer whatever, any questions, you know, but, but I'm not one of those guys that comes out like, Hey, you know what you need to do yeah. youngster. I, I don't, I, I just don't see the value in that because if that's the thing about comedy, people want your advice. They'll ask for it. I mean, I've yeah. had comments go, Hey, you know, can you do me a favor? There's this thing I'm working on or, what can I do from now? You know, and, and, and I can only give my opinion. Um, but, um, I don't, I don't volunteer it, but I do, if someone asks, I will, because it was done for me. Yeah. There, there were guys that were willing to answer my questions and help. And it also helps to just like, if you've had that conversation with a comic before and it's like, Hey, like I appreciate your feedback. Then every time you don't need to ask, you know, for permission or whatever, you can just be like, yes. Hey, Hey, I saw this thing. Like, yeah. this is something to think about it's it is very strange when you're a comic and you just were on stage and then somebody comes up to you and just like hey this i like this stop doing this and you're like like we yeah. i didn't ask for your opinion yeah. on this shit yeah. and like it, yeah. it's and even when it's coming from a good place like i i don't, it's a complicated thing to navigate i always try to ask if i'm gonna like give somebody a note on something to just be like, Hey, can I give you some yeah, feedback yeah. on something? And that usually helps to just like, cause to just be like, Hey, <laughs> you had a terrible set. Let me tell you why it's uh, right. it's. And I do think there are some people that like to just do that yes. too, you know? And to me, it's so damn awkward, right? It's weird and, as shit. And, and really to me, comedy is your own journey. So if you don't want people to come up and bug you and everything. That's great, man. You go do your thing. I, like I told you earlier, I'm glad Mitch didn't listen to everybody who just walked up and gave him advice because yeah. we wouldn't have seen the guy he became because he was like, I'm on this journey. I'm going to do it this way. And he did it. He made it work. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I kind of think if you don't want my advice, great. That's awesome, man. We all have to figure out what, what we, and, and there, and there are some things I didn't ask comics about that I probably should have. But I just decided, nah, this thing I want to figure out. I want to do this my own way, you mm -hmm. know. So I don't want to jump in on anybody. But yeah, anybody asks, I'm, I'm happy to help. 